in my car, so she doesn't fly very well, and she cannot hunt on her own, but she doesn't know that she can't do that. The red hawk is probably the most common large bird of prey in North America. If you are driving around, you see big hawks on a telephone pole or fence post, 99 times out of 100 is probably a red hawk. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said her name was Rose and she didn't know it, and it's kind of an important point. People are really strange about animals. We have a tendency to be anthropomorphic. Do you know what that means? It's got to be on the test. Later. No, <laughs> no, anthro means human. So when we're being anthropomorphic, that means we look at an animal and we think it's like a little person with feathers and fur. Grown-ups come up to you all the time like, oh, she's so proud, she's so majestic, oh, look, she likes me. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Those are all human characteristics. Now, I would never tell you that animals do not have emotions. It's obvious that they do. They show fear. They protect their young. You ever see a chimpanzee mother holding her baby? Obviously love, no doubt about it. Oh, I can even prove this. Would you guys all like to see a mammal with emotions right this minute? Okay, look at the person, look at the person next to you. There you go, mammal with emotions. Ta-da! <laughs> it's all right. See, it's obvious that animals have emotions because we are one and we do. We look at this bird, you definitely don't want to think of it like, it's like she's a little person, because I guarantee she's not. I was a, uh, a zookeeper, they didn't have a zoo for about 12 years. And every day, you'd see some kid going, Come here, mama, come here, mama, just walk up the llama won't come. Yeah, llamas don't speak English. <laughs> they speak Spanish. No, just kidding. The point is, is they have no idea. <laughs> I remember one day the zoo, there's this great big strapping fellow staring at the monkeys. No offense. It's you just happen to be in the right spot. So standing the monkey, of course the monkey stared back. And this is what the guy said. He said, hey look everybody, the monkey likes me. What he did not realize was that in monkey language, this means, I don't like it. <laughs> now you guys are all brilliant. You would know that. Is staring usually a friendly thing to do? <laughs> I'm 20 feet away and you're still like, ah! Right, staring is a threat. Staring is what predators do. The lions and the zebras are drinking in the same water hole, but everybody's just fine until the lions do this. And the zebras are right back up, we're all gonna die. So, we can understand animal behavior if we study it, if we put it into context, then we can understand what they're doing. But you don't want to think that they're thinking the same thing you're thinking, because we're probably not thinking that. Sometimes I talk to little bitty kids, we're sort of waiting for a and they think they're being friendly. Is that friendly to a person? Yes! Friendly to a bird? Ah, no. All right, so that's a good thing to keep in mind. So if you really want to understand how cool this bird is, look at it like a scientist. Look at those individual characteristics for survival, and those are called adaptations. It's a big word, but it's an easy word, because an adaptation is basically anything that helps a plant or an animal survive. If it's alive, it's got adaptations. You guys are alive, most of you. You have adaptations. We have an opposable thumb. We have a big brain. Sometimes we even use it. We have all these things that help us survive as a species. We look at this bird, we look at those individual characteristics, those adaptations, and that'll tell us what she does for a living. The first adaptation that most people recognize about the red tailed hawk is usually the wickedly hooked beak. <laughs> the one right next to my face. <laughs> ah! People always say, hey, Mark, does that bird bite? I don't really know. Hawks rarely bite for self-defense. Uh, most birds do. I have worked with many birds in my life. I have been bitten by lots of birds, mostly parrots. You know, these do shows with cockatoos and macaws, and now when a parrot bites, it's really unpleasant. Lots of parrots adaptation. It's got a nutcracker for a beak. Those big, cute cheeks, hello, you know, those are muscles. So the parrot bites, you really lays one on it. But eagles, hawks, falcons, kites, harriers, all these birds of prey, their beak isn't made to crush stuff, it's simply to rip flesh into bite-sized pieces. Oh, what a pleasant thought. <laughs> Here's my face. If she bit me, would it hurt? Yes, would it jaw blood, probably. But it's not her primary method of self-defense. If this bird felt she really had to defend herself, she probably wouldn't bite me. She would foot me. The feet are the... There's no food yet, baby. She's looking for something. <laughs> <laughs> you guys wonder why I wear a glove? You were wondering, right? No. Uh, she's, and really, besides that, it's really not her beak. It's her feet that you have to worry about. She's got incredibly strong legs and feet, very sharp talons. That's how they kill their prey. That's how they defend themselves. And that's, of course, why I'm wearing a heavy glove. And it's not because she's thinking to herself, Oh, man, if he wasn't wearing that glove, I'd get him! <laughs> no. It's because when I walk around, it's like a tree, 
trees swaying in the breeze, and hawks do that all the time. She's holding on so she doesn't fall off, but wasn't wearing a glove. That would really hurt. I don't think she had talents to kill her prey. Now, I don't know, can you guys see her talents? Her talents are huge. I mean, she... <laughs> I love that she carefully throws off my thumb. Alright, you can see her talents are huge. And by the way, Rose the Red Tail Hawk only weighs three pounds. And she's a big girl. That's, that's big for a red tail hawk. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack only weighs two pounds. Yeah, to be a bird, you gotta be lightweight. But she's got so daggers, so totally two. Two. I wish she carefully go stop. She didn't even work. Now, you know, I stick my bare thumb in the hawk's talon, which might not be the smartest thing I've ever done. But was she trying to go through my thumb? No. Could she? Well, you all say yes, like you know. Well, you're right. <laughs> she could. She could go right through my thumb, but that's all right, because, you know, piercings aren't in these days. <laughs> But again, she has no desire to try to hurt me on purpose. Reason number one, she's not afraid of me. Fear is the number one reason why any animal might try to hurt you. If I were driving along, saw an injured hawk on the side of the road, leapt out of my van going, Oh, you poor innocent woodland creature, I'll save you. Like, you can see me doing that, can't you? And I grab the hawk, and I hug the hawk, and I kiss the hawk on the head. Oh, that'd be bad. Because hawks don't speak English either. I'd be going, it's all right, I'm not going to hurt you. And the bird will be thinking, it's all right, he's trying to kill me. <laughs> the Rose and I were working together for a couple of hours. We started last year, so she's, she's pretty used to this sort of thing. And, but she's certainly not afraid of me, so she doesn't want to defend herself. The second reason why Rose doesn't try to kill me, and this is just as important, Rose does not realize that I'm at all. Think about it. When you're working with a predator, that's the last thing you want for them to know. You don't want them to look at you go, wait a minute, you're big and slow and you look tasty. Yeah, that'd be bad. But Rose doesn't think like that's wrong. Hooked beak, rip up the food, shot pounds to kill her prey. How does she find her food? Eyesight. You've heard of an eagle eye or hawkeye, right? It's absolutely true. When you see a red tailed hawk soaring in the clouds, that bird can see a mouse on the ground. I'm not kidding. This bird could look at your eyelash or see a mouse about a quarter mile away if you're outside. When you see a red-tailed hawk soaring over a field, they're not necessarily hunting, but they could be hunting from under. You know what? Their eyeballs aren't even round. If you were to pluck your eyeball out and look at it, and I don't recommend that, um, it's round, and you have muscles on your eyeball to look and down and side to side. This bird doesn't have that. It's a big bulge in the back and a small bulge in the front. When you look at her eyes, you're seeing a small part. It gets bigger back and her skull eyes are huge. They're so big they take up all the room. If she wants to look at something, she turns all that, doesn't she? You'll also notice when you look at eagles and hawks, they look like they're pretty much in a bad mood all the time. Don't they? They always look like this. <laughs> but they're not. Here, everybody go like this. Come on. And why would you do this except for the fact that I asked you? <laughs> exactly, to get the sun out of your eyes. But you can't do this and flap your wings at the same time. So eagles and hawks have a bony ridge over their eyes. It makes them look fierce, mean, proud. Ha -ha! Yeah, it's not there for that at all. It's just another adaptation. Keeps the sun out of her eyes because red tail hawks come during the day. You guys know what red tails eat, right? You know, uh, dogs, cats, small children. <laughs> not on the list. She's like, ah. No. They prey primarily on small ground dwelling mammals like mice and rats and ground squirrels. Although hawk this size will take something as big as a rabbit, which is pretty impressive for a three pound bird. They also take snakes and lizards, even occasionally other birds. But if she's got to catch another bird, it'd be on the ground. They're not built for high-speed dives to catch a bird in flight, as a falcons do. She's not built for quick turns to catch a bird in the woods. That's what a cooper's hawk does. A red-tailed hawk is built to soar, use those fantastic eyes, find things hiding in the grass. Now, you guys know she's a red-tailed hawk, right? And why is she called a red-tailed hawk? It's probably because of the red tail. Yeah, it's not bright red. It's kind of a brick red or a barn red. But on a sunny day, when you see a red-tailed hawk banking against the clouds and the sun shining on the back, no doubt about it, it's a red-tailed hawk. But just to confuse you, because it's fun, red-tailed hawks do not have a red tail for the whole first year of its life. <sighs> you guys ready? Life cycle of the red-tailed hawk. Here we go. Mom and Dad hawk make a big stick nest in the tree. By the way, guys, a nest is not a home with a bird. It's not home to people. It's a nursery. It's just a place to raise babies because eggs don't fly. <laughs> so, make the big stick nest, lay the eggs, sit on them for about 30 days, they hatch out, and get these fuzzy little baby hawks in the nest. But they grow super fast. They go from fuzzy little baby hawk to full sized in six to eight weeks. So the ones that were hatched this spring have already fledged. 
and they're already away from their parents. Yeah, they grow super. Not only that, with birds of prey, females are bigger than males. So when Rose was a little baby hawk, by the time she was ready to leave the nest, she was bigger than her own dad. Isn't that a trip? Can you imagine that? Father and daughter hawk sitting next to the nest. <laughs> this is my little girl. <laughs> Go kill stuff. Sorry. Eh, that's a hawk. That's what they always think. You know what? I actually kind of know how that feels. I was not lucky enough to have a little girl, but I didn't have a little boy. He just turned 21 years old in spring. Oh my goodness. He is six foot five. <laughs> I'm five foot six. <laughs> <laughs> this is genetics fun. At least I get to go. This is my little boy. <laughs> go kill stuff. Wait, something. <laughs> With birds of prey, females are bigger than males. But male or female, when they first... I can't believe you left it. <laughs> male or female, when they first leave the nest, they don't have red tail feathers. Their first tail feathers that go in that first, that first few months of their life are a light brown with dark brown stripes. But they only have those for one year. If they make it to their first birthday, and most of them don't, it's not easy being a wild hawk, most of them die. Sounds sad, it's just the way nature is. But if they make it that next summer, they molt. You guys don't know what molting is? It's when they lose their old feathers and go new wings in. They don't do it all at once. You don't see a bunch of naked birds right now. Poof! <laughs> no, they lose a few at a time. Those go back and lose a few more. And throughout the summer, they get a new set. And that's when they get the red ones. And that's how I know that a rose is about three years old. Plus, with red tail hawks, their eyes get darker as they get older, and she still has pretty light eyes. Now Jack, my old bird, the retired one, he's 32. And I know that because when I first met him, he had striped tail feathers. There's a picture of him and me from back in those days. I was skinny. That's been a while. <laughs> my beard was dark brown, my hair was dark brown. Bird looks exactly the same. That's not fair. Bird looks the same, I look like Santa Claus. <laughs> But it's just the way it goes. And I don't know how long they'll last. He's a pretty old hawk. Eh, Rose will be around for another 30 years. Um, I think I forgot something. What did I do with it? Oh, no, there it is. It's in my pocket. So I cannot let Rose fly loose in her. Plus, she's not a regular flyer. But it's just not safe to fly birds in the But it will let her eat. Would you guys like to see the hawk eat? Mm hmm. All right. I'm going to feed Rose. Well, here's good poop. Good job. Okay. You guys see? No, here's the cool thing about hawks. They shoot their poop. Oh no, oh, she went this way. I'm aiming her, I'm not aiming her at you. Ready, aim, fire! I'm not even going put a tarp down, man. I'm super prepared. Oh, that wasn't as good. She only went about four feet. On a good day, she can go about seven feet. No, no, here's why hawks shoot their poop. It's science. You remember I said they make a big stick nest, but they grow fast? If you're a baby hawk in the nest with your brothers and sisters pooping the whole time, that'd be disgusting. So as soon as they can, they back up, lift their tail, and shoot the poop over the side. <laughs> hey, if you lived there, that would make you happy. <laughs> falcons, on the other hand, falcons poop straight down. No, you know why? They don't make a big stick nest. Most falcons lay their eggs on the edge of a cliff. Well, if you're a baby falcon, you're sitting on the edge of a cliff and poop straight down, who cares? Look up, whoa! <laughs> so guess which kind of bird my wife doesn't mind in the house? Yeah, falcon. I could sit there and watch TV with a new falcon on the globe, put a piece of paper down, bird poops straight down, the big deal, hawk hits the walls, she hates that. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, but I'm not. <laughs> my wife is so amazingly cool. You know, we have a freezer full of dead stuff just for the birds. My wife is a vegetarian, all right? But she knows when there's rats and mice thung out of the freezer, they're not for her. <laughs> all right, speaking of rats and mice, I'm going to feed Rose her favorite snack, which of course is a dead mouse. Oh yeah. Now, if you don't want to watch a hawk in a dead mouse, then don't watch. I don't care. But, she's still a wild hawk, and so no screaming and yelling, okay? Be nice to her. So yes, I have a dead mouse in my pocket. You never know when you're going to need it. All right, wait. One dead mouse. She's got eyes like a hawk. I buy these by the pound of frozen that it's thought out. Yeah, it falls out pretty quick in your pocket. All right, here you go. Rose has got the dead mouse. She ripped the head off. Oh, uh, uh, uh. She's holding it, looking at her talon right through it. Oh, this is the whole thing. Holy schmoly. <laughs> the tail goes down last, I call that beak floss. <laughs> now, she's a really big hawk, and that was kind of a small mouse, so I brought two. 
She eats dessert. All right, here's your test. <laughs> It's kind of a small house, baby. Are you sure you want to rip that up? There we go. She's got it pinned. She's ripping and tearing. <laughs> Do you know what I think every time I see this party? T-Rex. <laughs> Don't you? Did you forget that's exactly what it was like? You know, T-Rex runs something down and pins it with this thing. Now you guys are actually not too bad. <clears throat> but I do find this fascinating. I've been feeding hawks in front of people for 32 years. And you always hear people go, oh yeah, that's disgusting little girls. Folks, I have seen people eat before. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a pretty sight. That's all you get. <laughs> she's looking for another she's like, you know, okay, I'm ready. And this bird, she didn't make a mess, no blood, no much. She didn't flick any guts on the audience. She just ate. And then you hear people go, oh, that poor little mouse. And then they go to hamburger and they don't go, oh, that poor little cow. <laughs> animals eat other animals all the time. It doesn't make them bad guys. It does not make them predators. And my wife, the vegetarian, she knows, and this is kind of a deep thing to say, there is no life without death. You know, when we grow plants, we kill the bugs. We destroy habitat. <laughs> you know, we do everything we can for ourselves. You know, we eat, even if you eat plants, other stuff is dying for you. So that's just the way life works. It's the circle of life. No, I'm not saying that. It's just the way it goes. All right, so Rose is a red-tailed hawk and not a red-tailed falcon. What's the difference? It's not size, it's not color, it's shape and design. There's big hawks and small hawks, big falcons and small falcons, brown hawks and gray hawks, and brown falcons and gray falcons. Are we all confused? They even change color. You know, like she doesn't get a red tail for a whole year? A young Cooper's hawk is brown and speckly with yellow eyes. An adult Cooper's hawk is gray with bars and red eyes. Same bird. So if you saw an adult male Cooper's hawk next to his own daughter, she'd get bigger in a different color. How's that for wacky? But you can always tell by shape and design. All right, you, what's your name? Yeah, like you You come all the way up the stage, right? Oh no, this is bad. Excellent. Can you stand here right next to me? Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> Can you hold the big one for me? You hold the big one, I'll hold the little one. I just need your help. Hold up so I can see. Excellent. Let's <laughs> 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 use the light slides because it's a dark stage. One more time. One more time. I'm not gonna do it. Good job. This is called picking on a lady. <laughs> she is amazing. You're really good at this. We have here the kind of me up. We have here the cutoff shapes of two birds. This is science. Come on. Two birds of prey in flight. One's a shape of a hawk and one's a shape of a falcon. Now before you guess, you don't need to guess because you already know the answer because you know what hawks eat. Snake, mouse, lizard, rabbit, all those things are on the ground. Have you ever tried one? I understand they're delicious. No, I'm just kidding. So if you were a hawk looking for a mouse and you went zipping across the field at breakneck speed, you're going to starve to death. You're never going to find it. So hawks don't do that. They soar, they fly, use a fantastic eyesight, sit on a telephone pole all day, looking for things hiding in the grass. Now, I'm not telling you that hawks are lazy, they are not. I was once out with a big old female red tail. She came powering out of a tree 75 yards out, pumping hard the whole time. At the last second, she pitched straight up to gain more speed, rolled over, tucked her wings, crashed into a six foot tall thorn bush, and caught the rabbit. <laughs> yeah, this is another falcon, we look like this. <laughs> and she didn't have a scratch on her. Their feathers are like overlapping samurai armor, man. She went right through it. That's what hawks are built to do. Crash through stuff. Falcons into the hand. Well, falcons often need to the perfect. Easy to find a bird. See them all the time, right? Not easy to catch one. If you're trying to catch another bird, you've got to be faster than they are, and falcons are. Some falcons dive at speeds well over 200 miles an hour. That's a really fast bird. So knowing that a hawk is built to soar and a falcon is built for speed, everybody point at the shape of the falcon. Which one looks faster? Which one looks like a jet? Which is all sharp and pointy? Which is on this side? <laughs> Very good! Long pointed wings, high speed dives, big or small, brown or gray, shaped like this, falcon for speed. Everybody point to the hawk. Um, she's sitting right here, right to the hawk? Mm -hmm. Atlanta's got the shape of the hawk. She's got the shape of the hawk. Big 